this week, April 4th, marked the anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. He was uh, shot down in Memphis on April 4th of 1968. We talked with Cliff Schechter in the last hour about gun violence. Sadly, gun violence is still a characteristic of our nation uh, 36 years or 46 years after the death of uh, of Dr. King. So what do we do about it? First of all, we mourn what we've lost. And secondly, we learn to move on. The details of Dr. King's death are not fully understood to this day, um, but we certainly know that guns were involved. And I wanted to, if I may, um, just give you a little reminder about who the man Dr. Martin Luther King was. Dr. Martin Luther King was, you know, when we have the hagiographies hey about him now, uh, they talk about the great leader for civil rights, they char- which of course he was, but they characterize him as if he had been a figure with no opponents, with no opposition. When when he uh, when they uh, Congress voted for the holiday, for example, only six members of Congress and either party voted against it. One of them was Dick Cheney, by the way. Um, but during Martin Luther King's life, it's important to remember he was a controversial figure, and he was a controversial figure for a number of reasons, including the prevalence of racism, uh, which in many ways had not been challenged until the civil rights movement came along. But he was also a controversial figure because Dr. King, who died on April 4th, 1968, was a human being who understood the interconnectedness of individual rights, collective rights, personal freedom, collective freedom, and the underlying economic social forces that tied them together. Dr. King was was controversial because, among other things, he was as fierce and outspoken in his advocacy for economic justice as he was in his advocacy for uh, justice in the civil rights world and individual civil rights. Let me give you a couple quotes of Dr. King's that I think it would be very worth us remembering today. Uh, In a speech in August of 1967 called Where Do We Go From Here?, Dr. King said this, true compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It is not haphazard and superficial. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. Those words echo more strongly than ever in this era of wealth dominating American politics and demanding slashes and taxes so that the wealthy can pay less and so that the poor will have less uh, assistance for heating oil or food or the basic necessities of life, not to mention access to health care. We're moving in the wrong direction. Poverty figures are going up. We need to do something about it. This is also a quote of Dr. King's that I would like everybody to hear. We must develop a federal program of public works retraining and jobs for all so that none white or black will have cause to feel threatened. There is nothing except short-sightedness to prevent us from guaranteeing an annual minimum and livable income for every American family. It's time to declare a minimum income for every American. It's time to demand a federal jobs program. The American Society of Civil Engineers said in their latest report that it would take $3.6 trillion worth of construction work to repair our infrastructure. We need a job for every American. We need to repair our infrastructure. And yes, it may sound radical now, but Dr. King was advocating it in 1968. Even Richard Nixon proposed it and almost passed the Senate a minimum income for every American. It's time for that. Um, He he also said the unemployed, poverty-stricken white man must be made to realize he is in the very same boat with the Negro. Again, tea parties may divide us. We are in the same boat together. Another quote, more relevant today than ever. Dr. King said in Biet, Beyond Vietnam, A Time to Break Silence, April 1967, Dr. King said, a true revolution of values will soon look uneasily on the glaring contrast of contrast of poverty and wealth. That contrast between the ultra rich and the rest of us is more extreme today than at any time in American history, including when Dr. King said those words. The profit motive, Dr. King said, we have the Koch brothers, Charles Charles Koch uh, uh, complaining that he's called un American and and uh, all Americans should support his Koch industries uh, interference with the political process. Dr. King said The profit motive, when it is the sole basis for an economic system, encourages a cutthroat competition and selfish selfish ambition that encourages men to be I-centered rather than thou-centered. Take that, Ayn Rand. 
Um, we'll give you maybe one or two more Dr. King quotes to go. Um, let's, let's go out with this one. When machines and computers, profit motives and property rights are considered more important than computer, the giant triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. I'll say it again. When machines and computers, profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, materialism, and, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. That's your answer to corporate per personhood. From the words of Martin Luther King, assassinated on April 4th, 1968, this week, 46 years ago. I'm RJ Escal. We will be back. This is the Zero Hour.